um, less than 167 of A Course in Miracles. I'm going to give my reflections on that. Okay, lesson um, 167. There is one life and that I share with God. There are not different kinds of life, for life is like the truth. Uh, it is the one condition in which all uh, that God created, uh, in which all that God created share. Like his thoughts, it has no opposite. There is no death because what God created uh, shares his life. There is no death because an opposite to God does not exist. I really like uh, I really like uh, what it says here. There is no God because um, uh, an opposite to God does not exist. And what this means uh, for me is non-duality. When uh, one is born, when the limited self is born, there cr creates the sense of a limited life, which is transient, uh, and and it experiences opposites like. Uh, it, it changes and uh, its it, its experiences is that it's born and then it has an unconscious fear that it can die. So it's ex experiencing these opposites or these polarities or these dualities. So the limited self, the ego, the body-mind ego, uh, is always uh, suffering one kind of fear or another and has a deep fear of its own death, um, its experience of non-existence. Or that's well, at least that's his perception of what could happen. Uh, but there is no death, it says in this lesson, because an opposite to God does not exist. So if, if God is um, infinite, eternal, eternal never-ending death, and infinite, ever-present uh, love, peace, and presence, then that can never die, because it's infinite, it's limitless, it has no beginning, it has no end, it cannot start. It has no limited aspect to itself, and so it can never fear being a limited entity that will pass away or experience duality, polarity, or opposites. So carrying on, in this world there appears to be a state that is life's opposite. You call it death. Yet we have learnt that the idea of death takes many forms. And I really uh, like what the Course is saying here. The idea, i.e. the thought of death, takes many forms. Um, you know, ageing, coronavirus, um, uh, lack of money, whatever these forms are that the limited self uh, perpetuates. Yet we have learned that the idea of death takes many forms. And I really like the way that The Course in Miracles says that, you know, the body is a type of form, thinking is form. Um, this whole um, existence of life, which experiences... Uh, uh, separation is also form. Uh, the idea that I'm separate from you is also based in limited form. So this whole unit, this whole sort of living, dying, collective universe is all in form, but it's not of the infinite nature. So it takes. Uh, so where is so? Yet, le yet we have learnt that the idea of death takes many forms. It is the one idea which underlies all feelings that are not supremely happy. It is the alarm to which you give response of any kind that is not perfect joy. All sorrow, loss, anxiety and suffering and pain, even a little sigh of weariness, a slight discomfort of your merest, or your merest frown acknowledge death and thus deny you live. You think that death is of the body. Yet it is but an idea, irrelevant to what is seen as physical. So you think that death is of the body. And this really reminds me of the course lesson, I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. It's almost like the ego arises due to identification. There's strong identification with thoughts. There's strong identification with the body. They become personalised and, and they feel like one's uh, real self. So the body, the thoughts, the story in the mind, they, uh, it gives one a very personal experience of a limited self that exists. And um, what is, is you think that, uh, that death is of the body. So you think when the body dies uh, that you're dying. Yet all of this is but an idea. I mean, this is all out of the uh, belief systems of the ego. A thought is in the mind. It can be then applied as mind directs it. 
but its origin is where it must be changed. <clears throat> if change occurs, ideas leave not their source. So I think this is basically saying, you know, uh, I'm an infinite being, but I am limited by those limited thoughts I hold in mind. The emphasis uh, this course has placed on that idea is due to its centrality in our attempts to change your mind about yourself. It is the reason you can heal, um, and uh, which really, I won't talk about cancelling beliefs, but if you hold a, a limiting belief which is creating illness, you can cancel it. It is the cause of uh, healing. It is why you cannot die. Its truth established you as one with God. Death is the thought that you are separate from your creator. It is that the belief conditions change. Emotions alternate because of cause you cannot control. You do not make and you can never change. It is the fixed belief ideas can leave their source and take on qualities the source does not contain. Uh, becoming different from their own orig origin, apart from it in kind, as well as distance, uh, time and form. So I really like that little summary, you know, we're, little, we're almost like little limited packages experiencing distance, time and form. So carrying on, death cannot come from life. Ideas remain united to their source. They can extend all that their source contains, in that they can go far beyond themselves, but they cannot give birth to what was never given them. As they are made, so will their making be. Make, making be. As they were born, so will they give birth. And, and where they come for, uh, from, there will they return. The mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. It cannot change what is its waking state. It cannot make a body, nor abide within a body. What is alien to the mind does not exist, because it, because it has no source. For mind creates all things that are, and cannot give them attributes it lacks, nor change its own eternal mindful state. It cannot make the physical. What seems to die is but the sign of mind asleep. The opposite of life can only be another form of life, as such, it can be reconciled with what created it. Because it is not opposite in truth, its form may change, it may appear to be what it is not, yet mind is mind, awake or sleeping. It is not its opposite in anything created, nor in what it seems to make when it believes it sleeps. I mean, I've just summarised, when there's identification with thoughts, with body, with this world, then the whole experience of the sleeping mind exists, uh, which isn't in touch with its infinite, undying nature. A god creates only mind awake. He does not sleep, and his creations cannot share what he gives not, nor make conditions which he does not share with them. The thought of death is not the opposite to thoughts of life. Forever unopposed by opposites of any kind, the thoughts of God remain forever changeless, with the power to extend forever changelessly, but yet within themselves, for they are everywhere. What seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. When the mind elects to be what it is not, and to assume an alien power which it does not have, a foreign state, it cannot enter, or a false condition not within its source, it merely seems to go to sleep a while. It dreams of time, an interval in which what seems to happen uh, never has occurred. The changes wrought are substanceless, and all events are nowhere. When the mind aw awakes, it, bu it but continues as it always was. Let us today be children of the truth, and not deny our holy heritage. Our life is not as we imagine it. Who changes life? because he shuts his eyes, or makes himself uh, what he is not because he sleeps, and sees in dreams an opposite to what he is. We will not ask for death in any form today, nor will we let imagined opposites to life abide, even an instant where the thought of life eternal has been set by God himself. This reminds me of enlightened teachers like Hawkins in the last run to enlightenment, 
they do not allow themselves to hook into any thoughts. They're just extremely on the present moment and not allowing themselves to get distracted into the thoughts which create duality and polarity. So carrying on, his holy home uh, we strive to keep today as he established it and wills it be forever and forever. He is Lord of what we think today and in his thoughts which have no opposite we understand there is one life and that we share with him with all creation, with their thoughts as well, whom he created in unity of life that cannot separate in death and leave the source of life from where it came. We share one life because we have one source, a source uh, from which perfection comes to us, remaining always in the holy minds which he created perfect. As we were, so are we now and will forever be. A sleeping mind must awaken as it sees its own perfection, mirroring the Lord of life so perfectly it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mere reflection. It becomes the thing reflected and the light which makes reflection possible. No vision now is needed, for the awakened mind is one that knows, it, knows its source, itself, its holiness. Okay.